Exodus chapter 34, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let all the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rode up, rose up early in the morning, and went up unto the mount uh, Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hands the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and mercy, uh, our goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for all the good testimonies, the good singing. Thank you for being such a good God that even in the middle of an ice cream aisle, we can enjoy you and worship you. Thank you, Father, for loving us more than we know what love is. And thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for what you've done for Miss Jan. I pray you continue to strengthen her and help her. I pray for Miss Veronica the same. You touch her, others that are sick, others that are struggling. I pray for Miss Courtney tonight. You know what she stands in need of. I do pray for those that are working with the children on the other side of the building. You'd bless their efforts. And I pray, as Brother Jordan's already prayed, that the Word of God would lodge in those little ones' hearts. When they reach the age of accountability, they'd get saved at a young age. Uh, I pray for those working with the teens. You'd bless their efforts and help them. But Lord, I pray for the next few minutes you'd show up big in our midst and God, you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, and Lord, we'd leave out of here demonstrating the change that's been made in us. Now bless as only you can and help these thy people. Help us to glorify your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. In chapter number 32, we find where Moses comes down from the mountain. And he thought there was a noise of war in the camp, and he comes down, and he finds that the children of Israel, while he was up communing with God, uh, and God pinned down the Ten Commandments and hewed them out of stone and gave them to Moses, uh, while all that spiritual transaction was taking place, uh, uh, the children of Israel rose up to play. Uh, they made themselves a golden calf and worshipped that calf uh, and said that calf's what brought them out of Egypt. Uh, and we find that God was wroth and God was going to destroy them. Uh, and Moses communed uh, and interceded on behalf of those uh, 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 Israelites and God didn't destroy them for that. But when Moses saw all the and all the wickedness going on he took the very commandments that God gave him uh, and he thrust them at them and broke the commandments uh, and can I say uh, uh, that was a bad day in Israel's day many of them died that day because they would not choose the Lord's side well here we find a couple chapters later uh, Moses once again confronted with God now, I want you to notice, first of all, the second chance. We find in verse number 1, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Can I say, it's always a blessing when God moves towards us first. Mm? And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, 
And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest, uh, and be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount, and no man shall come up with thee. Uh, notice there are some things, uh, uh, my dear friends, that you uh, have to face God alone with. Uh, it's a blessing when we come out uh, and assemble ourselves in the house of God uh, and have a service like we've had tonight. Uh, but friends, sometimes in order to get the help you uh, uh, need, to get you've got to meet with God alone and God himself will help you uh, but notice God reminded Moses he break the tables but God's a God of second chances he said bring two tablets and I'll write on them again aren't you glad that God's a God of second chances uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, my dear friends he doesn't throw away the clay aren't you glad he just remolds it remakes it and reshapes it uh, and he continues to work on our behalves uh, uh, what a blessing that we've got a God that's a God of second chances I want you to notice the sovereign's command Verses, uh, 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 I'm sorry, the so uh, sovereign's comments. In verses uh, uh, 5 through 7, we find that the Lord describes some things about himself. And then I want you to notice the servant's contrition. We find in verses uh, uh, 8 and 9 that Moses bows himself and worships and asks God to forgive the sin of the people and asks God to take Israel up for his inheritance. So we see some wonderful things in these verses, but I'm interested really in verses uh, 5 through 7 tonight. And I want to preach with God's help on this thought. I want to preach on God's epitaph. On God's epitaph. And by that I mean this is what is said of God not by man, but what God says about God. You've heard me say in times past with those disciples on the road to Emmaus that when Jesus was walking with them and Jesus begins preaching unto them himself from the, uh, uh, the scriptures uh, and uh, they later said, did not our hearts burn within us? And I've said, can you imagine Jesus preaching on Jesus? Can you imagine what a message that would be? Yeah. But right here we find God speaking about God. And oh... What a different insight when we see what God says about God. I want you to notice, first of all, He is Lord. Look what He says in verse number 6. And the Lord passed by before Him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God. He is Lord tonight. It doesn't matter what man thinks. It doesn't matter what uh, uh, the devil may spew out. It doesn't matter what uh, uh, some scholar may say. God said uh, he is the Lord. He is the all-sufficient one. Uh, God doesn't need anyone or anything else to exist. He is the Lord. Uh, God did not uh, uh, become created someday. He is the creator. God took nothing uh, and made everything. Uh, he is the Lord. Uh, uh, can I say this tonight? Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, God don't need the angels to tell him that he's holy. He is holy. Uh, uh, God doesn't need uh, uh, you and I to worship him and uh, uh, exalt his ego. He is worthy to be worshipped uh, because he is Lord. Uh, he is Jehovah God. Uh, there is none beside him. Uh, uh, there are no other gods before him. Uh, he has all power. He's omnipotent. Uh, he is always present. He's omnipresent. Uh, he is all knowing. He's omniscient. Uh, he is the Lord my dear friends uh, and my, my, my friend listen when God said he's the Lord you can take that to the bank Amen. Yeah, he's not worried about what's going on in the devil's forces he's not worried about anything he's the Lord God has never been caught by surprise Amen. he's the Lord he knows all things. And my dear friends, what a joy, what a blessing to know the Lord is on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? And He is orchestrating things in our lives. And He is at work. And He does know what's best. And what a blessing to have the Lord as our Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. So in the Lord's epitaph, in God's epitaph, God said... He's the Lord. Can I say something else about God? He's lenient. Look what the Bible says. Verse number 6. And the Lord passed by him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. He's lenient. He's not an evil taskmaster. 
He gave the law, but can I say this? The law, even though he wrote it in stone, is not etched in stone. Amen. One of the laws he gives Moses is, Thou shalt not lie. Has anybody ever told a lie? Amen. Well, why are you in church? You have no right to God. You told a lie. You broke the law. You're on your way to hell. Nope. Because he's lenient. When he was pinning it down in stone, he knew you and I couldn't keep the law. But he knew coming down the road there was one who would. And his name is Jesus. Sure. You say, why did he give the law to show us we couldn't? But aren't you glad he did? Right. Hmm? Huh? He's lenient. Uh, God does not understand sin. Don't, don't mistake me here. God does not condone sin. God does not allow sin, but He made provision to deal with sin. Uh, uh, God does not give us what we deserved. If He did, we'd already be in hell. Uh, but He doesn't give us what we deserve because He's lenient. Uh, because His great Lord of all, uh, He is full of mercy. He's full of grace. Uh, he doesn't give us what we deserve. He gives us what we need. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, a lot of times what we need instead of a stiff scolding uh, is a loving arm uh, to just say, I understand uh, and I forgive. Hallelujah. Huh? He's a lenient God. Can I say? There's many Baptists that aren't lenient. There's many Christians that aren't lenient. Oh, they want mercy from you, but heaven help you if you... Uh, do something against them. Amen. But God's lenient. God has made provision that if we have sinned, if we'll confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Doesn't sound like an evil taskmaster to me. Amen. Sounds like a loving, lenient God. He's lenient. He's Lord merciful and gracious. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for grace. But can I say this about the Lord? He's long-suffering. I mentioned some of that earlier, but look what the Bible says. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering. That means He's not swift to act. That means He suffers long in order to carry out what is best. A lot of times we want instant results. You better be thankful God's long-suffering. He was long-suffering with you. How many people got saved the first time you heard the gospel? That's what I thought. You know, God would have been just throwing you off into hell if you rejected Him and only heard it one time. But He's long-suffering. He let us hear it again and again and again and he kept dealing with us again and again and he kept putting people in our life and putting things in our life to get our attention again and again and again and again and God is long suffering how many times since we've tasted the grace of God have we failed the grace of God but yet he's long suffering he realizes we haven't arrived yet hmm he realizes uh, 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 we don't have, uh, 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 my dear friends, that white, fine, trying linen. Uh, he realizes we're not in a glorified body. He realizes we still live in this flesh, uh, and we still deal with this flesh, and we still live in this world and deal with this world, uh, and we still uh, have to face the devil. And he realizes that. Uh, and God is long-suffering. He keeps putting the Bible in us, and he keeps working on us, uh, and he keeps helping us. Uh, and God, my dear friends, doesn't give us what we deserve. Amen. Gives us what we need. He's long suffering. What a Savior. Hmm? What a holy God who puts up with us. Hmm, we're not worth the powder to take the blow away on most days. But God still has looked, in, he's looked at us and he saw something he loves. I say, oh, what a Savior. Huh? But the Lord said, He's Lord. And the Lord said, He's lenient. He's full of grace and mercy. The Lord said He's long-suffering. You've heard me say it many times. After you thank Him for saving you somewhere up there in glory, you're going to thank Him for being long-suffering. When you get there in your mind, it's a good thing we've got a glorified mind or our minds would just go... Pow. When you get there and you see all that He has in store for you and I, 
you're going to fall down and think, why was, why was I such a knucklehead? Why did I just, you know, wrestle with this? Look what all he's done for me. You're going to thank him for being long-suffering. Can I say this? This is God speaking about God. Not only is he Lord, not only is he lenient, not only is he long-suffering, but he's loaded. Look what it says. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. He just doesn't have a little bit of goodness and a little bit of truth. He has abundant goodness and truth. He's got a bountiful supply. Matter of fact, his supply is so vast and so abundant and so good that when he reaches in to get some, uh, uh, when he goes to distribute it, it's already refilled. I mean, he's abundant in goodness and truth. Oh, what a God uh, that is looking to be good to his people. He said he'd not withhold any good thing from us. Uh, he is abundant in goodness. Uh, has it been good to you, Brother Clint, these 40-something years you've been saved? Been good to you, hadn't he? Uh, far better than you deserve, hadn't he? Uh, he's just abundant in goodness. I mean, it'd be one thing if he's good to us every now and then, uh, but he's good every single day. Uh, Miss Janet, he puts breath in our body every single day. Uh, hey, he's been good to us. Uh, hey, you're sitting here tonight uh, with shoes on your feet, clothes on your back, drove in in a nice vehicle, going home to live in a nice home. Uh, Working a good job. Got a little change in your pocket. Uh, I mean, God's been good to you. Uh, hey, he forgave you of your sin. Uh, he's given you love, joy, peace, temperance, goodness, meekness. Uh, hey, he's been good to you. Uh, hey, he's given you a song in due season. Uh, he's given you a good church. Uh, he's given you the Word of God. Uh, he's been good to you. Uh, he's abundant in goodness. Uh, you'll never exhaust the goodness of God. Uh, and then he's abundant in truth. God will never lie to you. And his truths are so abundant that when you learn one, he can replace it with giving you two more to learn. Then you learn those. Uh, and he gives, gives you more and more and more. You'll never exhaust his truth because uh, his truth is infinite, my dear friends. Uh, he's abundant. Abundant in goodness and truth. He's loaded. Uh, I mean the earth is his footstool I mean to hear men kill for gold we're going to walk on it in glory God's not broke he's loaded but things that are valuable to God are not the things that are valuable to man God's a God of verity and truth goodness and mercy things that impact lives not impact, impact pleasures you know, I say he's loaded. I'm glad he's my God. Amen. I'm glad God didn't say, well, I got some goodness and truth, but it runs out in 1964. No, he's abundant. He's got as much goodness and truth today as he had uh, 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 when he pinned this down with Moses back in Exodus. Are you listening? Amen. He'll never run out of goodness and truth. Can I say something else about the Lord's epitaph? The Lord is longing to pardon. Look what he says. Verse number 7, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. God wants to forgive. God came uh, uh, seeking to save that which was lost. Jesus went to the cross to save sinners. Jesus longs to hear sinners call on him and ask him to forgive them. He's all about forgiveness. He's longing to pardon. How come we're longing to judge? God's longing to pardon. You know, in some churches, they don't want people who don't look like them and act like them and come from their neighborhood. You know who does? Jesus. He tasted death for every man. He's no respecter of person. He wants to forgive every man, woman, boy, or girl. Sure. Because he died for them. Amen. He loves them. And he longs to save them. He longs, my dear friends, uh, 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 to forgive iniquity and forgive transgression and sin. Hmm? He said he's keeping mercy for thousands. You know, all that he has and all the vastness that he has, he's still got some stored up for, for some that still need it. Are you listening? He said he's keeping mercy for thousands. 
so he can pardon their iniquity and their transgression and their sin. Oh, what a God. This is what God's saying about God. Huh? And then can I say this? He does tell us he's liable. He's lenient, but you don't want to push him. Look what he says in verse number 7. I mean, right after he talks about keeping mercy for thousands and, and forgiving and, and iniquity and transgression and sin, look what he says. And that will by no means clear the guilty. God will forgive those that repent, but God doesn't whitewash those that are guilty who refuse to, to ask for forgiveness. Remember when I said sometimes you've got to do business with God alone? When it comes to your sin, you've got to deal with God alone with that. Just because your parents got saved doesn't mean you're going to be saved. Just because uh, uh, Brother Phil did business with God doesn't mean God's going to you know, let you skate in on his coattails. You've got to be cleared by being forgiven just like everybody else. He doesn't just clear the guilty. He just doesn't say, okay, everybody's taken care of. Hmm? Oh, you was born in America? Okay, you get to go to heaven. No, it doesn't work that way. He doesn't clear the guilty. But look what else he says. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. God is liable. God does keep a record. And when people refuse to repent, they will pay a price. But can I say this? Not only will they pay a price, but their children and their grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Do you know why there's a, a lot of things going on in our country today? Because three or four generations ago, people turned their back on God. And we're paying the price today. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Hmm? Amen. There comes a point when God's long-suffering ends. There comes a point when mercy and grace dry up. comes a point when God says, boom, test it out worthless. And God will not forgive that individual again. My dear friends, it's dangerous to mess around with the goodness of God. It's dangerous to try and take advantage of God. I was thinking in my mind this morning of some of the young people that were brought up in this church who are now out in the world. And I've been showed pictures of some that have grown up, and I've seen some of the evidences of things of some that have grown up because their parents left church when they were at an impressionable age. The parents chose to go a different route, and the children are paying for it today. It's a dangerous thing. I'm thinking right now, I won't call name, but I'm thinking right now very vividly of a couple that I met with in my office and tried to warn them about leaving the house of God. But you, so, you know, they knew more than the pastor and they knew more than God. And if you could see their child today, it'd break your heart. God is liable. He does hold us accountable for some things. You better not miss the will of God and you better not mess with the things of God. Amen. You say, oh, God will forgive you. Yeah, I'm sure God's forgiven, but what about that child? All that that child could have been spared from. But because of their choice, the child is paying the price. Hmm? Can I say? It's a dangerous, dangerous thing to mess with the things of God. Listen, in these verses we find how God describes himself. Look at it again. And the Lord passed by him, verse 6, passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. That's what God said about himself. 
Do you think he meant it? Oh, yeah, he meant it. But that's what he said about himself. Now, being believers, we call ourselves Christian, do we not? Amen. Now, it always baffles me because in the early church, they didn't call themselves Christians. But at Antioch, their lives so emulated Christ, they were called Christians. Those in the community called them Christian, not themselves. But if we're going to wear that name Christian, that means to be Christ-like, does it not? Sure. Well, if we're going to be Christ-like or God-like, shouldn't this same epitaph be said of us? Amen. Let's look at it like. He, the Lord, the Lord God, said that He is merciful and gracious. Are we merciful and gracious? Said He's long-suffering. Are we long-suffering? Said He is abundant in good, goodness and truth. Are we abundant in goodness and truth? Do we share goodness and truth with folks? Hmm? Says... Uh, 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 he forgives iniquity and transgression and sin. Do we forgive folks when they do us wrong? Hmm? Do we? Because if we're not, then we should quit calling ourselves Christian. If we're really going to be Christ-like, let's be Christ-like. Hmm? Let's quit having smudges, because Christ was without sin. And if you got a smudge, get it cleared up by repenting of it. Let's quit having grudges. Hmm? Let's uh, quit holding things against people. And forgive people. One of the things I love about our church, it doesn't matter where folks have come from. It doesn't matter. They, they come, we don't hold anything against them. Folks have been out of church a long time. They come back in, we welcome them. It's good to see them. Sure. Isn't, that, isn't that the way it should be? Amen. We, we certainly need to get rid of the budges. There's some people don't want to budge. Well, my Sunday school class, we dealt with being lukewarm today. Hmm? You see, the Christian walk is to be growing in grace, nurture, and admonition of the Lord. Nowhere in the Bible do you find where Christians are supposed to just sit down on God. Amen. But yet in this day and age, most people have sat down on God. Well, if we're going to be Christ-like, you can't sit down on God. Amen. You've got to be doing something for God. You've got to be getting closer to God. You've got to be moving towards God. So we need to be truly Christ-like. Let's have this epitaph set in our life while we're living. Hmm. Let's be like God. Oh, I know we're not sovereign. I know we don't have all power. I know we're not omniscient. I know we're not omnipresent. I know we don't have the power to forgive sin. I understand those things. But we ought to take on His attributes. Amen. We ought to be loving because He's loving. We ought to be uh, uh, concerned because He's concerned. Casting all your cares on Him for He cares for you. Huh? We ought to lift up because He lifts us up. Are you listening? Amen. We ought to truly be Christ-like. We ought to learn to be lenient and long-suffering. We need to learn to be forgiveness and be good to people. We need to use these attributes of God by getting so close to God they become natural for us. So let me ask you. How you doing? Are you really Christ-like? Jesus turned the world upside down with 12 men, and one of them was of the devil. What could he do with just this crowd in here tonight Amen. if we just start being what we should be for Christ? Amen. If we just be full of goodness and truth everywhere we went, if we truly be lenient, long-suffering with people, you know what we do? We'd win folks to God because they desire to have what we have. God help us to let the epitaph of God become what is said of you and I in our lives. And by the way, God's not dead. Amen. That's just as fresh today as it was when He penned it down. So it should be said of you and I today. What is said of you? How do people view you? How do they view me? 
And God help us to get to the place where they view us like what God said about himself. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. When was the last time you just curled up in his lap and thanked him for being so good to you? When was the last time you thanked him for truth? It's only by the grace of God we didn't come out with a Halloween costume on tonight. Uh, you do know that is a pagan holiday, don't you? Uh, it's only by the grace of God we're not in hell tonight. Boy, I'm glad there's been people in my life been lenient with me. So why don't we just ask God to help us be more like Him? Amen. Why they're picking that song, let's pray. Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for how you described yourself in terms that we could understand. Now help us, Lord, to be more like Thee. Help us, Lord, to get to where the Apostle Paul cried, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Help us not to be pleased and gratified in the flesh, but long to walk in the Spirit. Now God bless folks. Help them, Lord, to realize that with the Holy Ghost indwelling us, we can live a life that pleases You and that makes an impact in this world. So help folks tonight to do business with thee. Maybe some just need to come and thank you for being lenient, long-suffering, and good to them. Maybe some tonight just want to come and tell you how much they love you. Maybe some need to come tonight and tell you they're sorry. Maybe somebody needs to go to somebody because they've been holding a grudge. I don't know, but Lord, I know that we can't get done what you desire to get done. Stand and pat. So God, help us to take the message to heart and be more like Jesus. God, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.